What's going on, brother? I'm, you on you on the, you on the mix with uh, the hour of power, man. So I had a couple questions for you, man. What's your name, brother? What's that? Demarcus. Demarcus. Um, quick question for you. What'd you think of the uh, of the fight last week? Get him on, Najee. The Conor McGregor. Yeah, the McGregor and the um, Floyd Mayweather fight. Uh, I thought McGregor, if he would have been in uh, boxing shape, he probably would have beat him. You think you think if he was in boxing shape, he would have beat him? Yeah, uh -huh. getting a little old. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think you could get that in the first couple of rounds of the fight. Right. Um, Floyd was a little different in the, in the fight, the way he was kind of stalking him and going after him. i never seen him with that kind of fight style before. Yeah. Would you I, think? I, and I think that was a component of him knowing that... Connor wasn't really a boxer. Right. And I think that he knew that that was a chance, especially in this fight, that he could possibly get a Change his style. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen him do that before. Uh-huh. Um, you think he's the greatest, the, the best of all time? Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, it's, it'll be relative for me to say that he is, just because, I mean, I'm 27, so. Uh-huh. At least in your him. era. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I mean... To me, of course, he has the best record that I've seen in boxing. Of course, yeah. Um, but when you look at some of the things some of the past champions have done, like work outside of the ring, mm -hmm. um, I think that component of it would make him not the greatest. Uh -huh. You think he's better than Ali? I mean, and that's what I was saying. I think um, I think what Ali was able to do outside of the ring would be something Floyd could never compare to. Right. So I think you mean the, the political and social outfit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. if you are talking about purely boxing, right. um, I think it's still hard to tell because in his prime, what he was all beat him. Right. And I think towards the end of his career, it was more of like him like having to be beat out of the sport. His own, like, I mean, the little the sport kept him there. Right. So I think that all the fights and stuff he started losing towards the end of his career. I mean, it was just a component of him just being like to keep fighting. Right. I think he only lost about five altogether. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but like that one, he lost to Larry Holmes and a couple of them. You know, of course, he lost to uh, Frazier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, and then it's also how he recovered from those fights. Mm -hmm. uh, Bounce right back. You haven't seen too many of like uh, situations where Floyd of course lost and mm -hmm. come back from that. Right. So uh, I mean, it's a difference. Right. I mean, uh, I, I guess I leave you with a simple answer. I don't know. Right. That's a hard question to answer. But we'll be getting back to you on a couple other questions, man. All right. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Start recording again, Najee. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quick, what's going on, brother? Quick question for you, man. Uh, did you see the McGregor? Um, uh, Floyd Mayweather fight. Yeah, yeah. What would you think? What you think about it? Um, to be honest, both of them are good fighters, but you thought it was fixed? Yeah, I'm gonna go against Grant. I thought everything was fixed. Fixed for Floyd to win the way he did? Absolutely. Wow. Okay. For him to want to put money on the in the round, the round concert go out. Uh huh. I feel like it happened. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, brother, getting back in the mix. Yeah, it's just typical. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you gotta look at his record. I mean, if you look at his record, I bet on myself too. See, so you thinking about Pretty Boy Floyd? I'm talking about Money Mayweather. No, Money Mayweather. You ain't never seen him do that. Like, in how long? About eight, nine years. Wait, what, what, the, the way he fought? Yes. Yeah, we just and talked about that. He kind of stalked him, right? Opponent mm -hmm. of who he was fighting and his background, not the fact of like this was just. Something like, oh, he had to go in there. I mean, he's been fighting boxing. Yeah, we're not going to ride for seven years. I just think it was fixed, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. This is one of them things where it's just too convenient for me. That what I, I think, and so you think it's like the Peyton Manning. Like, you know, Super Bowl. I'm saying, you still going back to that. I mean, I think that, like, I still think the Super Bowl this year was real. I still think the Super Bowl this year was real. What you think, bro? Yeah, he a Patriots fan, of course. Uh -huh. You know, he don't want to hear that. Uh -huh. 
But you got any opinion on the fight, bro? Mayweather has picked every fight opponent in his last 10, so you can't give him credit for being the greatest ever. I was getting ready to ask you that, because I asked him that. Ever. You don't yeah, think Mayweather, he's the greatest ever? It, no. Mayweather has not fought anyone in their prime. Oh, in their prime. Has not fought anyone in their prime versus anyone like Robinson. He's got 19 losses. Ali with five. They fought everybody that came that way. In, in, their, in their prime. Everyone, everybody he wanted to fight. Everybody he wanted to fight. Pacquiao, I'm not talking Pacquiao. Let's talk. Go back. Any other? He fought in the last. Hoya, too late. Everybody he fought is too late. It's too late. Mm. You fought Alvarez. Was it too late? You fought out. That was an exhibition. That's not a fight. Oh, that's oh. That was his first fight. Oh. That was his first. Oh, getting it in, man. <laughs> Who you think the greatest ever is, bro? What? Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson. Mike Tyson. Over. Yeah, Sugar Ray Robinson. Okay, you say Mike Tyson. Absolutely. Now, even Mike Tyson, considering the way he went out with all those bad losses and losing to Frank Wild Botha or whatever. See, I, I think, you know, he had, it was more of a mental state for him. But as okay. far as boxing, that's the best, like, the best boxer I ever know. I will still never fight him to the day. I will never. You must see him watch a lot of Evander Holyfield fights, then, because that would happen every time out if they fought. Yeah, it would. Wow. It would. Uh -huh. I don't think so. It would. I think that was, that was Now, brother, do you think Tyson was more of a fighter or a boxer? Because there is a difference. Tyson was okay. a brawler. Yeah, right. Brawler. And if he could, it seemed like if he couldn't brawl with you, then his plan, he was no plan B. And that, I think, yeah, and Vander Holyfield kind of exposed that. Because if you can keep him off of you, then it seems like he kind of gets lost and he don't know what to do. He didn't know what to do. Is that the, is that the sign of the greatest ever? I'll be honest. <laughs> what you think? Do you, you think? Do you think, you think Tyson was a top five? I mean, Oh, top, five. top five? So better than Larry Holmes, Sugar Ray Robinson, Hagler, Hearn? That's what I say. Like, it would be hard for me to compare it to all of them other, like, uh, boxers because they weren't my favorite. Right. I got to see a little bit of Tyson. Uh -huh. So compared to what, like, the boxers that they were doing, his era, like, they weren't uh -huh. my favorite. I see him, yeah. Right. I was in George Foreman. George Foreman? See, uh -huh. I was in George Foreman because that man came out of retirement and came back and won that championship. Like, mm -hmm. all right, he won, you know, Ali. That was the first time losing. They like, it's like a, that was like a culture shock to him. Because he, he mm -hmm. Ali gave something he ain't really used to. He was young, he used to going through everybody. He was right. going through everybody until Ali. Mm -hmm. You know, Ali, even that, the rope, that, 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 that's kind of, uh, what about what about it? Told me the rope and dope. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, that was, that was kind of, that was kind of a, got a fight right there because, uh -huh. because the rope won't, the rope won't, Regulation, they won't be hanging like this. Like, uh -huh. like, they went back and said, okay, the ropes is they're too loose. Uh -huh. It's like, if he, the ropes is that, that loose, you think he'll get away from, uh, from uh, performing punches? Mm -hmm. Nah, nah, that's definitely right there. I, I, uh -huh. I don't want. I like I like Ali for what he stood for. Uh huh. But that right there, you swing using the rope to try to get away from from punches instead of just you know what I'm saying? Using uh -huh. your own, you ready to steal but not uh -huh. you try to lose one of these. Oh okay. But uh -huh. like I said, he came back in he came back in one. That was just that was just strap. Yeah. And that man, that was the only way that's like to put that little button on the road was set. Yeah. Just like he said, he did the only way he can beat him. Yeah. And that means the great champions I know of, if I'm a great champion, I know I'm a great champion, I'm going to fight you with your game and win. Yeah. You did. Yeah. That's like telling you. I'm going to fight you with your game and win. I'm not even going to play the ground. I'm not even going to play the ground. Barbershop talk. Brother Sharif, the hour of power. He got to figure out how to beat you. He can't beat you. He got to figure out his strategy. His strategy was, I'm going to tire him out. If he tired him out and he can't throw no more punches, that makes me less of a fighter. I'm like this. Like this. I feel like I'm the best design artist in the ring. So like this right here. If somebody else come and say they're the best design artist, I'm like, OK, you shoot. We're going we gonna to do whatever design you feel comfortable doing. And I'm going to try to beat you at whatever kind of design you feel like is your best. Because I feel like I'm the best. I'm not going to go ahead and just try to sneak around. Let me try to figure out a way to get around. Yeah, gonna be there. Yeah. When he takes your design, after you finish with it, he has the same design and tweak it. And I look at the haircuts of them, it looks good right here, but he did this extra. So now he took yours and built it. Does that make you mess up a designer? I, no. 
Not, I'm not, I know, I know, but I'm gonna say it like this. He took, he, he took and tweeted it, and he put, you know, he put a better spin than I could have been on it. Right? I gotta give him the prop. He won that day. That's the okay. He won that day. I'll leave that. I'm in there fighting the dude that I know he's gonna kill. So the best thing I can do is lay there until this man can't throw no punches on there. Because the strategy was watch him in the training camp. If I watch him in the training camp, and I already know after so many rounds, George is tired. He ain't my version of champion though. The version of my version, like I said, like I see you like. On UFC, I see a lot of fighters. They'll go out and they'll fight whoever they're going against. Like the champions, they'll go and fight whoever they going against, and they'll fight. They fight. Okay, you fight. Oh, you say you good on the ground? I'm gonna fight on the ground with you and beat you. Oh, you say you good on? Oh, oh you good on top? Oh, you, oh, you fight me in the head? Okay, we are gonna go hand to hand. I'm gonna beat you. That's me. That's the champ. Hey, brothers, check this out. What What do y'all think about uh, what's going on with Colin Kaepernick? You think he should? He's a rubber president. <laughs> you think you think he's made a, a huge impact, or you just think it's a lot of smoke and mirrors? I mean, he made people that's not us, you know, pay attention to. I mean, we already knew about it, you know. Right. Us, you know, we so nobody knows about it. Right. It's no new revelation. Exactly. Uh huh. He made other people look at it. Uh, you, you think he should be quarterbacking on a team? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He should be starting. Bro. So you so you think they're blackballing? Him? Oh yeah. Put a coach. Yeah. Oh, put a coach. Okay. Mm -hmm. You think they're blackballing him? <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you know it's crazy how they they, they say when the, why are they not uh messing with the other uh the, the other athlete for doing it they mm -hmm. they stand up and sit down and whatnot. Are they could, they, could they, they are black? Huh? No, they are black. No, nah, the, nah, the problem is they know if they actually do something to them, boom. Then what we've been trying to prove the whole time. They, they've been messing with Kevin Kaepernick because of that. They can prove it. So they can't mess with them. They, 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 they bite their teeth now. They're their teeth. They're like, damn, he's going to another one doing it again. We can't mess with them because if we do, they're going to know we was really back on Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think more athletes in the NBA aren't speaking up? Because they got guaranteed contracts. Well, um, it's more to lose in the NFL. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So why do you think? Basketball, football, hockey, whatever you want to call it, Okay, how you look at it. What it is to set up is I give you this money. So you can be worth a half a billion dollars. But what I tell you to do is what you got to do based on this franchise. If the franchise says you need to stand up to the play, you need to stand up to the play. Why? I don't want to do that. I don't think it stands for me that I shouldn't have to do it. But because you with this organization, the organization says, hey, we have a code that we're going by. You're making our franchise look wrong. We don't want you. It ain't right. They're going to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Just this summer, the Bronze decided to sit out for the rest of the season after the game because they want to be ready for the playoffs. The Bronze made a statement. They can't tell us what to do. Two days later, the NBA came back and said, y'all do whatever we tell y'all what to do. There will be no more players sitting out for the playoffs. What's the, what's the message they say? You're going to do what we tell you to do. You're a modern day slave with money. There so, are so certain, certain players that can just say that. Right, uh -huh. there are. Certain players. Like, there are. You're speaking on that. LeBron, LeBron is one of the ones that can push back. See, they uh -huh. tell LeBron, he's like, oh, you can't speak about this issue. Uh -huh. What are they going to do if he just right? <laughs> well, the, que the question is, is what can we get that across to the athletes? Because they think that um, they may lose a contract or some kind of endorsements. You know, I'm thinking that's where their apprehension is coming in. You know. Mm -hmm. Come on, drop some knowledge on me, bro. Uh -huh. Well, the whole point is what you just said. It comes down to if you go back and you look at an endorsement. Like he said, LeBron speak out, but when he speak out, what happens when I speak against what you told? Mm -hmm. So now I go back and say, we're going to pull this two-phase contract from mm -hmm. We're going to pull that Gatorade contract from it. Was it that worth it with the money that you write? Mm -hmm. That hurt sponsor. Like, you can take LeBron off the of Sprite. Okay, so you sell the Sprite. You can take it. I mean, you can, mm -hmm. you can try to. I mean, people that control that much of a market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're saying Kevin Durant or Steph Curry or Russell Westbrook, if they do it, you still gonna have the same amount of impact right now. Now as a right. game, like you know, right. of course they're not on the same level as LeBron, but right now they're just as big right now. Yeah, as in the, the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. LeBron, but I'm talking about as in like like.
the response after. So okay, so if you come back in and tell them like, oh, so you're not gonna like sit, you know, or you know, doing the um, the uh, pledge of allegiance, then LeBron's response can be like, no, I'm going to sit. And then it's like the response to that can be nothing because you can't do anything. LeBron, because he's taking away a lot of money. Yeah, he know that, and LeBron, that's why he speaks up. He know that they can't give so much to him. I mean, he, he coming, he's coming out foot by foot. You with the shirt, you wear with the black line matter shirt, and the fifth shirt. So he trying to do a new by foot with they, with up off that he was here to do. And I think cause he know he gave him a lifetime contract. You know, he just fifth. I mean, there's some flaws in there too. He can't, he can't do anything he wants. Man, come on. I mean, he can't go out here and like beat a woman on like that's recorded on like. I mean, he can't do that. But LeBron can stand up for political issues. He can take a stance on either side. He walked on either. You said why don't he? He does. He did. Not a big impact though. You don't think it's an impact, bro? Not a big impact. Now is it now is it just on him or is it needs to be a collaborative effort? Yeah, yeah. Collaborative effort. Because now you open up different doors. When you open up those doors and all fall back in your face, if I didn't mind my business stay to myself because of the power in them as an individual, they ain't gonna recognize it as an individual. This is LeBron James, we're gonna send a message by you, LeBron James. We take your endorsement. That's why you gotta do it. No, you can't do it by yourself. You gotta make sure that when you go in there, something like with the captain next thing y'all saying to me, if the guy is unified, that we stand with him instead of one and what the NFL is gonna do or my organization is gonna do, then he's gonna get more feedback as opposed to people blackballing him. He's not being blackballed, but he's being singled out. Mm -hmm. I think it sends I think it sends a um a me I think it's what I call a public lynching because See? what it does is sends us exactly. a, a, a a message to yes. Everyday brothers like me and you saying, if you see an injustice on your job, nigga, you better not say nothing or else. Right. He, they're making right. millions. What about the black man that's only making 40, 50, 30,000 and say, look, if you say something, this is what you're going to get. So I think it goes way beyond. See, when you uh, go back and excuse me, when you no problem. the Constitution or the preamble, the people, mm -hmm. what people are they talking about? <laughs> Not us. Point in time, are we considered people? Nope. Right. Well, they had just three-fifths of a people in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you go back and you talk about our pledge of allegiance to the flag of America, for which it stands, what does it stand for? Right. Because I'm like them. I grew up in high school and, and middle school doing that, but then what's the purpose of it? In the end, you don't treat them with the same rights as you treat everybody else with. So right. why do I have to stand up and glorify your flag? Right. right. And it does not hold the same same constitution of the same law for me that it holds for the white guy. Mm -hmm. so Douglas said it's the best, man. Right. That's, so that's why I say, again, it's modern-day slavery. You mm -hmm. don't know it, but you're living in an era where you can still say for so much. And when I say so much, how far can I go before I go without getting something to happen at my job or hey, you need to call that guy down and next thing you know, somebody called your job and love you enough, we work for black folks. Mm -hmm. right. quick, <laughs> quick question for you, brothers. Um, since you brought up like the constitution, um, quick question for you. Do you think um, in the eight years he was in office, Obama changed anything for black people? It depends on what you say as far as change. Because be it Obama, be it Clinton, be it Reagan, they don't make the change. Mm -hmm. They can put things in the order to try to help you change yourself. And the question mm -hmm. is, do the people think that they change? Mm -hmm. Because you sit there saying, well, because he's a black man, I ain't got to live over here in this project no more. Because mm -hmm. he's a black president, I ain't got to do this kind of thing. You got to do whatever you got to do. Because again, there's a bill in the law. Once you pass that bill, or once you insert that bill, it still has to be passed by Congress. Mm -hmm. If it's shot down, it don't make it one way or the other. Puff Daddy himself said Obama didn't do nothing black people. Mm -hmm. But it's not for him to do anything for black people. Mm -hmm. Black people do nothing for Mm -hmm. Because what he showed us is that there is a possibility. What happened? Come on, on. Mm -hmm. For us to get in and do the thing. Mm -hmm. Because, again, I got a friend telling you that was in the president. I argue with him every day. Right. He said, You never see a black man. So he did that. So now, that's my 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. What you What you think, brother? You think you think Obama changed anything for black people in his eight years in presidency? Okay. It's not a big change. Once he got in the office, you knew I was I know at least for like, I think that they kind of say they hold out as a term. Mm-hmm. 